off with local news. Bronx educators are educating their students on the recent siege at the U.S. Capitol, having a conversation and a dialogue, giving them an opportunity to discuss racial injustice as well as social change. Our Bronx Step reporter Co Cody on UK brings us the details on this particular story. We believe that these events, particularly with the pandemic, are just compiling and putting more pressure on our young people in a really unprecedented time. Chaos ensued in Washington, D.C. on January 6th as insurrectionists and supporters of President Donald Trump stormed Capitol Hill, which led to five dead and dozens injured. Educators across the nation are faced with the responsibility of addressing the domestic terrorist attack with their students. Like many Americans and those across the world, watching the events unfold on TV and social media, students grapple in questions, fears, and concerns. While horrific, many educators like Kamwa Gordon, principal of Walkabout Bronx High School, vow to take this situation as an opportunity to confront injustice, social change, and the imagery of the Capitol Hill siege with students. We viewed a Washington Post video, uh, which is a bit of a, a montage of various videos from the event. And then students utilize the Padlet platform to respond to the video. And as you can imagine, students were still in shock. You know, they responded in anger and in sadness for our country. We also had students engage in a meditation activity during advisory. Analyzing the past and current year, white supremacy lingers as a presence that is embedded in the DNA of America. Identify how there is alignment with this moment and that history. Um, because let us not forget, this event was simply a microcosm of a much broader picture of racism and oppression in America. Honoring Martin Luther King Jr. Day this month, many activists like him leave us a legacy to follow. To one, help our young people become more critically conscious, and two, instill a level of activism in them. Bernice King, daughter of the late Martin Luther King Jr., tweets a lasting reminder. This is not abnormal. As my father said, this nation was born in genocide. We have yet to earnestly address America's violent roots, its white supremacy, or its racism. With urgency, we must. If we do not, violence in many forms will persist, no matter who is in office. Reporting for BronxNet, Cody on UK. Well, thank you, Cody. In other news, Mod Haven families gathering, demanding justice in the South Bronx, where the NYPD officers kettled, assaulted, and arrested hundreds of peaceful protesters on June 4th. Our BronxNet reporter Sanji Lopez brings us the details of this story. On June 4th, BronxNet reported what began as a nonviolent protest and march in the South Bronx and ended in violent mass arrests. This was the scene on 136th Street and Brook Avenue in the Bronx on that evening. Recently, Mott Haven families organized a rally on the same corner demanding justice for June 4th. They never thought that anyone would really care. They thought we could just come in here and do whatever we want. You know why? Because, you know, it's black and brown people, really. We do this any all day, every day, any, anyway. Well, they're wrong. Attorney General Letitia James filed a lawsuit against the NYPD to, quote, end the pervasive use of excessive force and false arrests by the New York City Police Department against New Yorkers in suppressing overwhelmingly peaceful protests. The lawsuit mentions the June 4th events here in the Bronx and sources information from an extensive report by Human Rights Watch. Our Human Rights Watch report found that the NYPD carried out a planned assault on a group of peaceful protesters that was unjustified and unprovoked. These people were exercising their First Amendment rights and they were ironically protesting police brutality that has been going on in this community for decades. 
Among their demands for accountability, Mott Haven families and supporters, including Assemblymember Amanda Septimo, called on other local representatives and the rest of the community to stand beside them. So one of the things that I'm here to do today is call on the community to ask our council members to call a hearing on what happened on June 4th so we can get answers on everything from the planning to the uh, use of force to the lack of restraint that, that happened on June 4th. And so that's one way. But another way is making sure that we ask the 40th Precinct themselves to meet with the community, talk about the things that went wrong so that we can all learn from this experience and make sure that it just doesn't happen anymore because we just can't live in a city where we allow abuse to happen to communities of color and look the other way. Attendees march from 136th Street to the 40th Precinct, where Mott Haven families have gathered every Sunday morning since June. Organizers handed an officer a letter on behalf of the community. One of their hopes is to finally open a dialogue about what truly transpired on June 4th. Really, it's just outlining that we want these demands, and we really want to know who are the people who are involved in the planning of this. We want to know who the officers were who were uh, who conducted themselves in executing this brutalization uh, during that time. We want to know what the local politicians had to say about it. And then also, we really do want to defund the police. You can read that letter by searching at Mott Haven Families on social media. For now, the families say they'll continue gathering and holding peaceful protests every Sunday morning at the 40th Precinct. Reporting for BronxNet, Sanji Lopez. And thank you, Sanji. That's all the time we have for our Bronx updates. Stay with us. We've got a full show. Open continues right after this.